Okay, so what we are doing today is a second lecture which is on collections. So what are collections? Our first lecture we deal with something known as your variables. Okay. Now variables itself, you can only store one item inside a variable. So let's say in most of the work that we do, we have a lot of different items. For example, a lot of different gene sequences or so on and so forth. Then we're going to have a lot of variables. Okay, we end up with having um, a lot of variables. Okay. So this becomes a big problem. This becomes a ma massive problem because all variables need a certain name. So why not we use this thing known as collection to group things together? Okay. So you can think about it. Let's say, for example, you live in a regular HDB flat. Okay, my drawing is a bit atrocious, but I live in a regular HDB flat. Now, your, your block has a certain variable attached to it. This variable is known as your poster code. So every unit inside the block uses the same poster code. Although we can say that it, we can say that, let's say this block, um, for example, this block is your 520171. Okay, let's say this is a poster code. We can say that this unit 520171, we can actually say that this is um, from here. You can say that this is your um, level and then your unit. Okay. So we can actually assign things like if 520171 is an acceptable variable name. In Python, it's not nah, because it's a number. You can say that it's 520171. So this will be the level. And then this is the unit. So automatically, you can think about if you are at um, six level and then your your house number is one five two. Okay, so it becomes how do you address your house? You'll be five two zero one seven one level zero six unit hundred and fifty two. So you can address it this way. However, if you live in landed properties. So these, all these are lender properties. Each one has its poster code. So this can be um, 462121. This is 462122 and so on. Uh, one, yeah, one, two, two and so, on. so this acts as though they are your regular variables that you recognize from last week. What we are dealing this week is actually this part. Can we block things together, group things together into collections? So there are a few collections to note. The most important ones will be lists and dictionaries. Okay. List is basically treated like a list of numbers, the shopping list even, or shopping list or whatever thing. Okay. Tuples, we'll go through a, a little bit because you need to understand what a list is before you can understand tuples. Now, the difference between a list and a set is that lists can have duplicates. Okay. A set cannot have duplicates. All right. Dictionaries, on the other hand, think about how does a, your regular dictionary looks like? You have your, your regular dictionary will have a word followed by a definition. Right? That's how your dictionary looks like. And then this word one, word two, word three, and so on. Okay? So you have the definition one, definition two, definition three. In this case, in Python language, we call this word as your key. The definition is your values or values. Similarly, in your regular English dictionary, the word or the keys must be unique. That means cannot have duplicates. The values can be duplicates. Okay? The same definition can be used for two different words. 
but the num the word itself cannot have duplicates. Okay, so far so good. Any problem? So we'll go through one at a time. We go through this thing called list. Now list is this. We have the ordered. So the list, the ordering of the list. That means a position. When it says ordered, means the position is important. Okay. Mutable means can change. Means you can change the item inside the list. Okay. So here it says that it's actually a comma separated list and closed in square brackets. So we talk about square brackets here. It is not round brackets, square brackets. Okay. So this is how a list looks like. So you have list that is position zero, position one, position two, position three, position four. Okay. And we let's say we call this list as um, data. It automatically, if I take data one, I will, I'm actually calling out, I'm actually calls out the value inside, which is sig one. As you can realize that the items inside the list, they need not be the same data type. Okay. Items in list can be different data type. Okay, so far so good. Because why? This is a float. This is a list, a string. So this is a float. This is a string. Okay. We can even put a list within a list. It's possible. Okay. The list within a list is always possible. So later we'll see. All right. So how do we subscript? That means how do we identify the items? So let's say we have five of them here. One, this is item zero, position zero, position one, position two, position three is three, and this is position four. So if I take position one, I'm actually calling out the data is at position one. So that's called subscripting. So let's take this as an example, and we go here. Let's say if I go back to what we have, A0, what will it give me? Can you, A0, what will it give me? Can anybody say something? We can say in the meeting chat. Can anybody hear me? Okay, you get DNA sequence, correct. So Ambrose, you are right, um, but you need to be capitalized, okay? Yep, so the rest of you are correct. Okay. So similarly, we, we do a bit of revision. If we go to minus one, what do you get? Index minus one. Yes, correct. All right. So if you have minus, so this is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. Now, what happened if I ask for minus six? Will it actually look back or will it give me an error? Yep, it will give you an error because if you want it to look back, there's actually another data structure for it. Okay. So collection, sometimes you call it as data structure as well. So it means that there is no looping. No, no, no looping back. Okay. Another data structure with 
with looping back, right? That is called a, a ring data structure, R-I-N-G. Okay. That means the whole list, instead of a, a whole list it, that looks this way, so this is a list, position zero, position one, two, three, four. The, the data is actually looking like a donut. So it keeps looping back, all right? So this is called a, a ring data structure, which sometimes can be quite useful in certain um, cases. All right, okay. So the next one is called slicing. Now slicing is the same as you treat it as your list, uh, no, treat it as string from the last lecture. So think about each individual one like an alphabet. So let's say if I do a A, I want from one to four. Okay. So one to four, I'll take sequence one, this, and number three. Okay, because number four itself is exclusive. Okay, so I'll just take this three. Because it's inclusive and exclusive. Okay, so far. We got that. It is treated as though each one is like an alphabet inside your string. It works the same way. Each one is like an alphabet inside your string. Okay. Let's say I if I were to give you something else, for example, I want to call this data, and I put down um something like this. Uh okay, before I before I go that. So let's say if I want to change this sequence one into something else okay, we know that sequence one is from okay, it said a first okay. we, we know that sequence one is a subscript one okay this gives me sequence one if i want to change the value of sequence one to something else maybe i call it sequence 10 i can do that i say a that uh one first two the new value that I want to give it. So I can give it, let's say, sequence 10. Okay. So then sequence 1 is changed to sequence 10. So this is how I assign a new value into it. So far so good. Now Python works as, work in this principle. Whenever you can read, most of the time you can write into it with that. There's a few exceptions though, but at least you can get here. So far, any problem? How do you change this? You can change the data. That means sequence one is permanently gone. Huh? So far, any problem here? Yes, no? I need some answer. Yes or no, any problem? Hey, anybody reply? No problem. Okay. So let me just do another one. Let's say data. I can actually do something like this. Okay. I can have one, two, three, and the fourth number is actually a list by itself. So five, six, seven, Nine, ten. So I can have a list within a list. Okay. So here, what you can see is if regularly we take data one zero one two, I get three. Okay, because it's the third position, but the fourth position instead of number four, it is the entire list. This is treated as one whole item. Got it? You see how does this two work? All right, so far. That means that you can have a list within a list. So how do I assess this number five? What should I type if I want to just print out five, like as though I'm doing my step 11? 
what do I do to just bring up five? Why not you try out and see how what do you do to bring, bring up five? Anyone? If I just want to print out five instead of four, five, and seven, I just want to print out five. What do I do? I just want to print out this number. What should I do? Anyone can test out and see what happens? Try out. You get errors, it's fine, but try out. Hello, respond. Anyone? <clears throat> Correct. So, Jasmine, you actually treat this as a list and then you subscript again. So, it is data tree and then one, position one. Because you treat this as a data tree is actually this list, inside is position one. Okay, so you get five. So this is how you do it. This, this actually gives you a two-dimensional array because or two-dimensional list because it's a list within a list. Is there a limit to how many levels you can go down? That means can I have a list within a list within a list within a list within a list? Okay. There is no limit. But try not to do something like that, it will get you very confused. Let's say I want to change 5 into something else. I can do the same. I change 5 into the word me. And okay. now it becomes me. So we aren't supposed to put an equal. Uh, no, equal when you want to do assigning, assigning. When you want to assign something into this value. You just have the data itself, it will just give you a data. It's just like calling out x. You don't call x equals what. Okay. So if you call equal, I'm not sure whether am I getting what you're trying to say, Rebecca. If you say this equals, it will give you an error because you expect something. Okay. So be very careful with the data type because let's say um, or this is the data that you have. Let's say instead of changing three into position three, subscript one into something else. Ah, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. It will give you an error. No, no, no. You don't do that. Rebecca, that's a totally wrong thing. So let's say if you do some, what you do for Rebecca, right? It probably give you an error. Like give you a syntax out of range. Because there's no idea what on earth is this thing that you want. Okay. Oops. Well, let's get back to here first. <clears throat> so let's say instead of changing um, this to the, my me into, let's say, your name. For example, I use Rebecca's name. Okay. It is very easy and it's extremely easy to forget and you do this instead. Okay, if you do this instead, instead of what you're trying to do for here, right? Let's say you do this instead, and then you look at the data. Now, position one is changed rather than this. Okay, so you have to give, get a clear mind where you are in. Okay, and you have no idea what is this last result in the first place already. Okay, you, have, you have substitute, you have actually replaced two into Rebecca. And there's no way of get back to it anymore. There is no 
um, undo, undo function. Okay, so far, any problem? Okay, so list itself, there are many different commands that we can do. You can actually replace, what we have done is we replace. Okay, you can actually replace something with a collection. Okay, so you can actually replace something to something with a collection. So let's say I can actually do something like this. Okay, so my data. Okay, and I do this data zero to two. I replace it with good. Morning. Okay. So basically, zero, one, and two, 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 I'm actually taking these two positions and I'm replacing it with exactly good morning. Okay. So I go back to my data and now you get substituted in okay, you know, zero and two. So zero and one, replace with this. Okay. So I take two and I replace with two. It's two by two substitution. I cannot, let's, let me try something else. Can I actually do a three? Okay. You can do that. It actually slot in another one. So see, it actually take these two positions and then it slots in this tree into it. So you, you extended the list by one more. So you have to be careful what you're doing here. It doesn't give you an error. You actually make the list longer. Okay, so you, you see from 25, I do 26. Zero and zero to two, I'm taking these two position. And then put it in. Okay, so it actually adds on this one more position for you. And so you have to be careful with it. So far so good. When you want to um, substitute or want to replace a whole section of it. Okay. This doesn't give you an error. Huh? Line 26 doesn't give you an error. So please be extremely careful. You can remove the items, you can remove a certain items and so on. Or you can actually add something to the end of the list. So I can actually do this. Let's say I want to add another item to a list for my data. I can append it. So append means going behind. And it tells you what to append. Okay. So I can append um, 2020. And what it does is, we actually append to the end of it. Okay. So far, any problems? Now, list is very versatile. In fact, that is the one of the most important thing you will do in for almost every single thing. So let's say sometimes I cannot remember this whole i this whole modification. Okay. It's, it's too many to remember. Okay. And then, what do I do? I can either go and um, look at the documentation, the Python library documentation, or I can do this, I can do a um, DIR, and then put the data type into it, and actually look at what are some of the item things I can use. I can append, I can clear, I can copy, I can count, I can extend and do all this. So each one will tell me a little bit. So for example, I take data because data is a list, right? I, I want to see, okay, what on earth does append mean? So I say append. I want to look at the documentation inside append. So I put double underscore, DOC, double underscore, and I actually read the documentation. Okay. What on earth it does? It appends an object to the end of the list. Doesn't tell you a lot of different things. But this is where you have to uh, try out. Very important. Uh, sometimes you use it. Is this thing called sort? For example, I have. Let me change my data again. So now I have a list of alphabets. Okay. A. B. D. H. Uh, let's say B. 
y s When I do a sort, sort that means I want to sort this in alphabetical order. Okay. Please do not do this. Huh? If I do data equals data sort, data will be nothing. What do you think has just happened? Why data now becomes nothing? See, data has become nothing. So here, when I sort and I put the sorted list back into data, why data becomes nothing? Why data becomes, I'm supposed to get a sorted list, but what happens here? which data, which is a variable with no information. Okay, so the thing is this, this function called sort does not return a value. Okay? That means there is no, it doesn't give you a value back. But I can say that, let me repeat this here. What I should do is, I should do this, data, and then I take data sort. Okay, it's sort in place, that means it, if I take data now, it will give me a sorted value. Because the sort function doesn't return some a value, a number. It's just a process. So this is what it means when here says it sort the ascending value. It's actually sort in place. Huh? So take note of these two. When you, you, when you start out, you always think that every function will return a value. No, there are some functions in Python that doesn't return a value. Okay, so this is one of them. It doesn't return a value. So if you do that, you end up with your data going missing. But what you want is a sorted list. Okay. So far so good. So you, when you actually look at this, you can decide which one are you going to use. You can do a pop, you can do a reverse pop, you can pop the first element or the nth element. So let's say I do a data dot pop. This will return a value because I pop the last one. If I, and then my data is reduced by one already. So I remove that, I pop it out. Okay, so far, any problem? I use a pen function to add something into the data, into a list. So I cannot do something like this. Data, e data equals to um, data plus, let's say, me. I cannot do this. It will give me an error because I cannot concatenate a string to a list. I can only concatenate a list to a list. So if I want to put me behind, I will have to use a pen. Okay. Now you have this. Alternatively, look at this. I cannot. I can only concatenate a string to a str a list to a list. So if I want to really do something like this. Okay, what I need to do is this. Okay. Instead of instead of doing this in itself, let's say I change, for example, I'll insert my name into it. Since it only tells me I can I can only concatenate a list to a list, right? I make this the thing that I want to add into a list. So I'm adding a list to a list. Okay, so now data. Is added in okay, because it becomes a list. This is quite helpful in a lot of sense. I can do the same thing. I can do, let's say, uh, one, I do one, two, three. This, I add a list to a list. 
and this is where I'll get it. Okay. So the whole list get thrown in. It doesn't throw in and as a list by itself, I throw in all the values as itself. So far so good. Anyone confused already? <clears throat> so what, what happens is, is, now you look at data, okay? What will happen compared with step 46 if I were to do this? Compare step 46, the outcome is in step 47, but I'm actually doing the second one. I have a double bracket. So now my data, I concatenate the whole list as though it's one value. Make sense? So now my data minus one, it is a list by itself. So it is highly flexible, free meaning that it's very easy to mess up. Okay. Any problem so far? Okay. So why not you go through this exercise yourself and see whether any one does, doesn't make sense to you. Go through this modification, did uh, slide six and slide seven. See which one doesn't make sense to you. Okay, let's take um, for next ten minutes or so until one forty-five. You go through that yourself. See what doesn't make sense. Always look at before and after the operation. Okay, once you're done, just give me a sign that you're done. Just say that you're done. And if you have any question or no question, we'll just sort out one at a time. If there's any problems, just type inside your um, meeting chat. Because you will, I don't know if any one of you have problem.
Okay, anyone needs help? First, is anyone around? All of you are getting a bit quiet today. Yes, okay, Ambrose is alive. Okay, Arun is here. Dino is here, okay, good. Yeah, Nabil, Junhang, okay. Please mark your attendance, huh? go and mark your attendance in the form yourself. Okay. Yes, finally I'm getting signed that all of you are alive. Okay. And yep, so long term. Johnson. Good. Okay, good. Try slides number five and, and six and seven. If you have problems, let me know. Okay. Slide number seven, uh, Rebecca, two. So this one. Okay. So what does it do? Now delete. Delete is always a problematic one. So you can delete every. So you are actually looking at this version. Okay. Delete k elements from something to something. Okay. So what does it mean? So here is everything to everything. By are deleting the second element. Okay, so it's first element. You delete off the first one ready. You miss out the second element and then you delete the third element. That's what it's trying to say. Because if you take this item, right? Okay, so let's say um what variable does it give? A. Okay, so this is A. So before you know, understand the delete, what you need to first figure out is this thing. Okay. What does A this means? Two colon inside. So it means every single thing. Okay. So when you actually do it, don't do a delete first and put two. It only brings out these are the items that has to be deleted. Okay, because things that it brings out are things that are supposed to be deleted. So it left only with the one in the center. Okay, because it takes from zero all the way to the end, skip for every second item. So the first item it takes, the second, the next, next item it doesn't take, and the third item it takes again. So it skips one item. So got that, Rebecca? Yep, good. Now, extend is very similar. In fact, extend is just a uh, what I'm doing here. This is as good as extend. Number 46 is as good as extension. 946. This is what I'm doing for extension. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> okay, one more minute. Anyone already finished? Ready to go. How does remove works? Okay, so just try. Look at the documentation. Remove the first occurrence of X. So let's say I have this. So this is my data equals to this. Okay. So let's say I say data, I remove. Oh, 
Um, this is not a good example. So let's go back again. So let's say I have one, two, three, and then I here I put down B. So here is the documentation. It says that it removes the first occurrence of X. Okay, so let's try. If I say data, remove, and want to remove B. Okay, so I take data again and look at the difference. I remove the first occurrence of B. The next occurrence of B, this B remains. So it removes the first occurrence of B. If I want to, if there's only one time it happens, right, then you will just remove it for me. So if I continue, and I say that remove um, me. Okay. So this me will be removed. But let's say if I remove something that is not even existent. Aha. You will just tell me it's not in the list. Okay. In fact, it gives you an error. So this tells me that it's not in the list. It is different from fine. If fine is not in the list, it will give me minus one. But here, it gives me an error. Okay, so far, answer your question, Jasmine? Okay, good. This also means that sometimes the documentation um, is written in a way it may not be easily understandable to you. So if it's not understandable to you, um, just try it out and see what happens. So this is what we are trying to do. You read. So when you read the documentation, I say read, remove, you read, insert, you don't understand. Try out and see what happens. <clears throat> All right. Ready to go? All right, everybody managed to finish six and seven. Do you need any more time? If you need any more time, please let me know immediately. Otherwise, we'll go on. <clears throat> okay, let's go on. Are, you, are all of you here that, there already? Now, tuples. This tuple, the only difference is it's ordered. Same at least it's ordered, but it's immutable. That means you cannot change the value inside. Change the values or items in a tuple. You cannot change. But things operation like in and not in will still work. Okay. So tuples is by round brackets so round brackets have a different use huh? remember we talk about round brackets as the we use it in the functions we also use it in the tuple so this is a bit confusing so let's say if i have a tuple okay, let's say this what do i mean by I cannot change if i have a tuple and a list. Okay. A is a list. If A is a list, T is a tuple. I can say that A position one, I change it into something else. Okay. Hmm. It will work. Okay. But immutable means that if I take T and I take position one, I change it into a me, it will not work because tuple you cannot change the items inside. I mean, it's stuck. It's stuck. Okay, so tuples is like a more inflexible version of a list. Don't find any problem. But, 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 I cannot change the items inside. I can add items to it. So remember list, right? 
can say that A equals to A plus um, height. This will work, correct? I can add another item to it. I can also add items into the tuple, just that it may it looks a bit strange to you. T equals to T plus. If I want to add high, I have to use a round brackets instead. Okay. Now, do let's try. You try this. You what? What will it give you? Will it work? Anyone try? You this you you do line sixty two and then you do line sixty nine. You do line sixty two first and then you do my last line sixty nine. Will it work? No. Okay, Jasmine say no. What is the error you give me? So let me repeat again. What I'm trying to do is I have a tuple, which is T. Yes. Okay. And I try to do this, which supposedly I'm trying to concatenate a tuple to a tuple. Right? But it, it tells me that I can only concatenate a tuple to a tuple, which is exactly what I'm trying to do. Not a string, but it recognizes this as a string. So how do I do a concatenation? The only way to do a concatenation will be this. Okay. After the height, you put a comma. It makes it into a tuple. Then it becomes, oops, then it becomes okay. So see this? This comma is the one that makes the trick. It converts this from a, a string into a tuple. So you can do it similarly. See if I have something else, that means I have more than one item, I don't need the last comma. See, I can I can add things, just that I can once the things has been added, the items have been added, I cannot change it. Which means that things like remove, pop, all these will not work in tuple. So far so good. Any problem? So can somebody tell me why on earth we want to use tuples instead? Instead of lists? Since it's so un unflexible, or not too flexible. Anybody can give me some reasoning? Why is this concept of tuples being invented in the first place? Any suggestions? So the question is why we use tuple? Okay, so let me go back and let me just start here. Why use tuple instead of list? So that the data cannot be changed easily. That's a good one. Actually, that's the main reason. It actually pre it actually prevents you from making errors like all the way in the beginning that we have. Okay, for example, um, things like such error. I want to change me into Rebecca or something like that. So basically, I'm just locking the values up. Safer, because I'm locking the values up. That's why it's safer. It doesn't allow me to change. So that if I do make mistakes in my programming later, at least I still have my values here. It will give me an error if I try to change it. Okay, so if I say T um, 0 equals to me, me, me. 
okay, you give me an error, I cannot support. The next reason is comparatively, tuples actually use slightly less memory. Okay. It actually use less memory. Yep. In a way, it uses as a, a function argument, correct? Okay. But pretty much, pretty often, we seldom use tuple because it can be quite inflexible as well. Okay. But don't bother with it. Let's go to sets. Sets is mainly is unordered. The position doesn't matter. The only thing is there's no duplicate. Okay. So you can actually change things into set and list quite readily. I can use a set operation to actually decide. Okay, let's say I, I do this, this. I do a set operation to decide what are the number of alphabets inside. What are the unique alphabets I have? Okay, so you can do a, a, a set to actually find the unique words that you have inside your paragraph or something like that. So that actually makes life a lot easier. Um, you can also use in and not in to check membership. So in maths, you have this, right? Your is your A, a subset or a member of X. This is um, as good as in, is A in X or is A not a member of X. So this is not it. So we tend to use this quite often. So list, there's also other operations. For example, we can union two sets. Hopefully you still remember a bit of your uh, set operation. You can do union, intersection, difference. So difference will give you that it's a new set where it's one element in one, not the element of two. Okay? Or symmetrical difference. Symmetrical difference means that elements in either so let me just point out, right? Uh, union, union, uh, U N I O N, okay, will be everything, okay. Intersect will be only those in the middle. Difference. Okay. Let's say this is A and this is B. Okay. So I, I take so the difference is A minus B, right? Okay. Which means that is in the set of A that is not in the set of B. So basically, I will only take this shaded area. Okay, that's difference. Symmetrical difference. Let's say A, carrot, B. This is A and this is B. What you return me is actually this shaded area and this shaded area add up together. So you see the four differences? All right. So far so good. Visually, can you see what happened or not? Somebody answer me. Okay, great, Jasmine. Okay, good. Hey, so let's try this. Okay, so we have A, B, and C. So A bar B. A bar B means it is union. Okay, intersect is n. Huh? So A bar B is bar means all. So A or B will give you everything, A plus B. Okay, so far, there's no, no problem, right? A and C, that means what is common between A and C? Only item number three that's common with, and you'll return it as a set as well. So this part, let's say we have A, and here is B. Okay. We want to try this. Um, so A is 1, 2, 3, right? So A, we have 1 here, 2, and 3 here. B, there's nothing. Okay. So when we say A minus B, we are only taking this part. All 
right? So this is where you get this answer because it's only one. A and C, A, C, so there is A, this is C. So we do, this is one, uh, two, this is two, three will be here, four and five will be here. Okay. So what I want is, I will take these two section, and this is symmetrical difference. So it gives me one, two, four, five. Three, the common one will not be taken. Okay, so this is the four different operations. Okay, so set is actually very fast. That actually does things very fast, so we can actually use it very often. Any problem with sets? This is a very kind of basic of sets. Any problem? Okay, so since now it's two o'clock, let's go for our 10 minutes break before we come back because, or you can try out other stuff and come and ask me questions when you need. I will pause the recording first. So we'll come back when you are, I'll uh, just keep the recording on. Otherwise we will get into problems when you come back. There's no pause function. No, there's no pause function. Okay. So you can either practice by yourself or break until 2, 10 p.m. We'll come back. All right. Anyone alive? Oh, you are so tired from this morning's lecture. Okay. okay any problems, just um, type in the meeting chat. I'll be reading it.
Okay, any problem so far? No. The rest? Long turn, no. Presume the rest have no issues. So let's come back and continue. Um, it sounds a bit crazy to ask, but anybody not around? Anybody around? Anybody not around? Okay, so anyway, we'll continue. Hopefully you are all back. So here's my question. How can I generate a list of numbers? So from zero to 30. One way is I type out. So for example, I can say that numbers. I can type out myself. I can type out you know, zero, one, two, and all the way to 30. Okay, but as you can see, it's quite tedious, especially if I want to type a hundred numbers. So this is where I can use this thing called a range. Okay, this is our next one. You can use a range. Range is to create a series of integers. So range, there are three ways of doing that. One is just, just give it a number. So you just give it a number. It will start from zero all the way to n. Ends at n minus one. Okay, or you can give it a starting and ending number. You just give it one value. It will start from zero. If you give two values, you will go from the n number to the m number. That means you will, let's say 6 to 10. You go from 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's a second step. The third is with a step. If there is no step, means k is not given, it is automatically 1. Okay. So let us just see how does it work. Okay, so for example, if I take a range, I go from Let's say I go 10. <clears throat> it will give me this thing, range 0 to 10. It actually expand out for me. But what I want is a list. So I convert this into a list. So I type cast the range operation into a list. So now it gives me 0 to 9. It will be the same if I give it a starting value. That means I start from 0 to 10. So line numbers 79 and line number 80 is identical. So far so good. Because if you give it just one number, and this must be an integer, it will, it will actually take from zero to the number. So what I mean by this must be an integer. I cannot say 10.0. It will give me an error. Okay, it must be an integer. It refuse to convert it to in, it refuse to internally convert it into an integer. So far so good. Okay, so we have this already. So this line number 82 is also identical to 
I do a step of one. If I want alternate, I want zero, two, four, six, eight. I will do a step of two. Oops, drop one bracket. So this is what I mean by step. So far so good. Any problem? Yes, no. Step is like a multiple, yes, correct. So this allows me to do something like this. Okay. I can do, let's say, from, okay, so let me go back again. I can do from here, zero to 10, but I can start from two to 10. So it starts from, instead of zero, I start from two. So I can actually start from 1 to 10, and 1 to 10, I do a multiple of 2. It's not exactly multiple, it's a skip. Okay. But this is slightly different from multiple. It takes alternate because it is just making taking every second value so the first one take after that it takes the second value takes the second value and so on yes the it looks as though it is a like multiple but it's actually not you start from zero then it looks at like multiple yes okay. if you start from zero you will look very much like a multiple So I can go from 0 to 100 I want multiples of 11. Okay. Now, it doesn't actually give me a multiple because 0 is not a multiple of 11. Make sense? But if I start from 1, then this is not a multiple of 11. So what's the easiest way to generate multiples? As you can actually imagine, right? I start from zero. Let's say I go from to 500. Okay? I want multiples of um, 23. But I just want to remove the first number. So I go, it gives me this already, right? Which is all multiples of 23, except zero. So I can do it. I start from position one all the way to the end. So now it gives me multiple. I just remove the first position. See the value in this? What will happen if you do something like this? Huh? So I take 10 to zero. What will happen? Will you give me anything? Try out yourself. Will you give me anything? Start from 10 and at zero. Someone try? Will you give me anything? Nothing, right? It gives you nothing because you cannot start at 10 and n at zero with one multiple. Okay. Basically, it means this. This doesn't make any sense. It gives you nothing. Ah, what you need, if you want to reverse, you have to do the dec decrement. Minus one. Then it gives you the opposite. Yes, Ambrose, you're correct. You have to give the minus one. It just do the uh, reverse order. And usually reverse can be very confusing because you remember last week we had this problem. The same thing. You reverse and then you skip. Okay. So this is how we use range for a lot of different items. We can use range to count the number of items that are there in the list as well. Okay, but we'll go through that. We'll go for I think the third or fourth lesson. Okay, so the final part that we are covering today 
is your dictionary. <clears throat> so dictionary first is a mutable, that means changeable, is unordered as a key value pair. So it has to get a key matched to a value. Okay. So you can have multiples of keys and multiple values. And what we do is, is actually assigned by using your curly brackets. Okay. So here it means that A gives you alanine, C gives you cytosine and so on. So you assign it, let's say we get this, okay, see ya. Yeah? Okay, so here we say that this is base, because you know that it's base. Ah, it's a lot. Okay. So you can actually treat each one as one entry. So a key value pair is one entry. Each entry is separated by a comma. Okay. So I have base. So now what I'm doing is if I say my base, I give it a using a square bracket as though it's my list and I call a A. It will give me the value. If I ask for the key, it will give me a value. So this is what it means by a dictionary. It's a key value pair. I cannot do the reverse. Huh? I type alanine. You will tell me that there's a key error. This key does not exist. Make sense? Yes, no, so far? Any problem? Anybody alive? Yes, so you are. Yes, Ryan means that you are alive or you understand. What if you want to get the key? Um, so that means you want, for example, Jasmine is your question asking me how many keys there are. That means if I have a dictionary, but I have no idea how many keys there are, okay? So you have a function to do that. Let's see if we go to the next step. The function is you just type in the dictionary and you use a function known as keys. It will give you the list of, then you take this, right? And then you, you um, force it to give you a list and you give you all the keys. So the keys will actually force it to give you all the keys. Okay. Similarly, you can force it to give you all the values. Okay. Yeah, you can force it to give you all the values. But there's no way of going from values to a key, sir. You only can go from key to value. You assess the dictionary by having from key to value, not the opposite way. Although there's a way to show how what all the values. Okay, so Jasmine, does this answer your question? Item number 100, 100. Okay, good. Okay, so what happens is, let's say I have my base. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So sometimes I want to change something. For example, I want to say, okay, base. Let's say I made a spelling error. I, I say that 
um, base A equals to adenosine. For example, I want to, to take the whole, um, what I call that, um, nucleotide. I just don't want the base, but I want the whole nucleotide itself. Okay, adenosine. This will actually add in, it will change from, it will actually change the value. This is how I change the value. Okay, but what happened if I add something in, I try to change something. For example, I change I. There's actually this base called I. Uh. Let's say innocent. There's actually this base, okay? So what will happen? Will it give me an error or will it not give me an error? If it gives me an error, that's fine. If it doesn't give me an error, what, has, what do you think will happen? Any idea? 9105, what do you think will, what's the outcome of it? Anyone? <clears throat> Nine one zero five. Let's try it out yourself and then see what what what's the answer you get. Somebody answer. Otherwise, I do not know whether you know or you get it or you don't get it. Remember, I don't see your face. Add to a base after T. Okay, so when you try to change something that is not existent in the first place, you will just append to the dictionary. So now, your base, see, you will just append to the dictionary. Okay. But it doesn't mean that this T is always the last, I is always the last one. Huh? It has an interesting order. But don't, just don't bother about the order itself. Because remember, dictionary, by natively, it is a unordered. Okay? That means, technically, the keys are not exactly alphabetical. Okay? The keys are not exactly alphabetical. Okay, there is actually an eternal order, but this is very com complicated to explain to you. All right. There is also no limitation to what the value can means. I can, the value itself can be a list, can be a number, can be even a dictionary, can be even a tuple. Okay, so let me just show you an example. Uh, let's say I go to Okay. New. Hopefully you do realize that um, there's other nucleotides, right? Like for example, R can mean A or G, and so on and so forth. Okay, N means everything. Uh. Okay, and so so this is what we call as the um, what we call this. Uh, non-specific base. Okay, so R is A or G. So I can even do this. Okay? I can even say, let me change it back to the, the correct one. Okay, so base equals to this. Okay? So we have this base. So all these individually, they are um, string. Okay? So I can say that base And I want to append it as a list, okay? Adeno, adenine, and G, right? Guanine. Okay. So now, R becomes the value, becomes a list by itself. Okay. I can do that. There's no, nothing wrong with it. So it's flexible. 
it's flexible in this case even. Okay. So let's say, for example, you look at this G. Okay, I made a mistake. I have another apostrophe. So how do I change it? Sad to say there's no way of changing the key. You cannot change the key. The only way is to delete the key and put it back. So I delete the key. So um, base, I delete the key, which is G. Uh, this I have a copy because it is a non typable I don't know how to type this. So when I delete, G automatically, this wrong one becomes deleted. Then I will put it back in. So if you make a mistake, yes, it's much more troublesome. Way to change a value is to delete. Yeah, I can replace is a bit troublesome. Um, I don't think there's replace. Let me see. Yeah. Mm, let me go dir base. Do I have a replace function? No, there's no replace function. So I cannot say base replace, let's say uh, G with G. Okay. This will not work. There's no such thing as replace. Yep. So Ryan, you cannot replace. You have to delete and then re-put it back in again. So it, it, it's troublesome. The values can even be a dictionary. The values can even be a dictionary, which means that I can say something like this. Base R is equals to a dictionary by itself, which contains my alanine and guanine. Okay. So after that, what happened is, see, it's actually a dictionary inside a dictionary, which means I want to access the this guanin, right? Will be base R G. So it will be almost like accessing your lit, your two dimensional list. Right? You actually take value from this guanin and not this guanin. Huh? To make your life a bit more e easier to see, I will just change the capitals. Okay, go here and just call this as okay. so what I'm doing here is you actually call this guanin instead. So far. You get the able to assess, able to change, able to put things in. Therefore, in Python, you'll find that you use list, range, and dictionary very, very often. Okay. Set is normally we use set as a way of finding the unique values. All right. So here we already have keys. You, can, you actually have a value attached to a key. That's what I I did here. Okay. Then you have to replace a new value. Oops. Uh, what they do? Replace a new value. Similarly, what I've done here, I replace a new value. Okay. Or you can add anything. So I can even say that. Um, let's say I change my uh, let's say I change different names. For example, I change my G. Oops, change it to a list which is one in. 
I have my base. Then because every time I call base G, it's actually a list, which means that I can do things on the list. I can actually say that equals to base G, another way of saying guanin, which is guanidin. Then it's added to it. The, see the value of this? Okay. So let's say I can say um, my data, I have another dictionary called data values. And I can just type in, you know, I can just type in let me just call this data value and say marks. Okay, so marks, I can just put some of the name in. So the last one, let's say I put Ryan in, your name, and start your marks as zero. Okay, and put another one's name. For example, I put um, Jasmine's name. Then you start off your marks as zero. So just this two. Okay, so at the start of semester, your marks are zero. So what I can do is over time, I can set, okay, so marks, I said I put Ryan. Now Ryan has got maybe 10 marks for his latest assignment. So I say Ryan equals to Ryan plus 10. Okay, now Ryan becomes 10 marks. So I can use it as a, a storage of different values as well. So because it's a it's a integer, I use it as though it's a regular integer. If I use it as a string, it's a regular string. So it's very flexible in this way. All right. You can delete the keys in a dictionary. That's what I've done. Delete and then you replace. Okay. So why don't you try these examples <clears throat> and see whether are there any problems first? Try spend the next five minutes trying out your slide number 15. See whether are there any things that you do not understand. Okay, let me know in the next three minutes whether are there any problems. Otherwise, we'll go through the last two slides.
Okay, any problems? Any issue? Yes, no, just let me know. <clears throat> no? Okay. So I know it's pretty heavy for this week because Friday is public holiday, so you have time to run through everything. Okay. So update. Update is essentially changing the values. Okay. Usually I seldom like to use update. I will just use this method instead. Okay. I don't seldom use update. Okay. So I can actually do the same thing. I can say marks. Um, let's see, how does it work? Update for each key, update, replace to D2. Okay. Update, what it does is it actually takes the key from D1 to D2. Okay. So if you have two dictionaries, then you can update two different lists. Okay, so I, I say this is my total marks. First two. Okay. So now I take total marks, which is originally zero. I say update by marks. So now my total marks. It's updated. Original total marks is nothing. Now I update it based on the marks. So it kind of um, synchronize it to some extent. But it's a one way. Uh, it's update from marks. All the changes push it in total marks. This allows me, instead of trying to do one, one update at a time, it means rather than repeat at the whole process all over again, you can use the update for that. Now, keys and values, these I've shown you, for example, <clears throat> let's say marks. I can show you the keys. So the keys you have, two values, Ryan and Jasmine. The values will be the marks itself. And you realize that it's actually in the same order. Okay? It's in the same order. So you can actually use then this as a, as a, as a method as well to actually uh, get the two values out. Sometimes what happens if we want the values we attach, that means Ryan, I attach it to 10, Jasmine, I attach it to zero. So I use this thing known as items instead. So items will assign this out. So the key value, key value. So if I take these items, right? and I force it into a list. Okay. So you will actually give me two, two items. Okay. It, inside it's a, it's a tuple. So I take, um, I say this is, I call this is M. And then my M0, which is Ryan, I will get the data, the key and value. Okay. So I can use these items to actually kind of compress or rather zip up the, the key and value pair into a, into a list by itself. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the next part. Uh, we can spend the next five minutes to try this out. Okay, there are a little bit of errors here. Oh, put it properly here. So update. Um, val key values and items. These are the three that you need to practice. All right. So if you have any problems, we can come back to discuss it on Wednesday. No, Thursday. Uh, Wednesday is tomorrow, Thursday. Um, yep. So also go through your tutorial too, which I've posted up online already on in LMS. Any problems so far? Any issues? Before we go off, no, anyone with burning questions? Okay, then that's all for today. I'm not sure whether you have class later, but yeah. Okay.